Good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you all to the Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of Phenotex Chemicals who will present their quarterly and financial annual financials for FY22. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. From the management side, we have with us Ms. Arti Jhunjhunwala, Executive Director; Mr. Sanjay Tabrewal, Executive Director and CFO; and Mr. Arindam Chaudhary, CEO. They are going to represent the company today. I shall now hand over the call to Ms. Arti Jhunjhunwala for her for her opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thank you thanks a lot good morning everyone it is my pleasure to welcome you all to Finotex Chemical Limited Q4 FY22 earnings conference call with the financial statements and earnings presentation already available on the exchanges and our website i hope you all had the opportunity of a serious perusal of the same let me start with an overview of our present state of business and the strategic outlook for the upcoming quarters As you are already aware, Finotex is India's leading specialty chemicals producer with a major presence in both domestic and international textiles market. Our constant focus is to is broad basing the market and to create visibility of our brand. Our constant endeavor on value added services like providing technical solutions in the specialty chemical sector is a step in this direction. Biotech our Malaysian subsidiary is in charge of R&D and of overall product development leading global organizations like Blue Sign and ZDFC have recognized us for our environmental initiatives Finotech and Biotech both complement each other's strengths and our value proposition is recognized by customers all over the world our firm is well diversified with operations in south and north america europe and asian countries and our goal is to increase market share among existing and new customers in both the indian and international markets by using the strengths of finotex and biotex we take a cautious approach to finance expansion ambitions through internal accruals and our goal is to keep our capital structure net debt neutral Sustainability is at the core of our business and hence we strictly adhere to environment friendly manufacturing practices. Our belief for long term success is maintaining high standards of ESG and delivering value to our shareholders. We actively drive operational efficiency, financial jurisprudence, innovation and people focus through best in breed practices. I would now like to call upon Mr. Arindam to take over and give an overview of our operations. Uh, uh, thank you, Arti. Very good morning to all. Uh, let me begin by saying that uh, we are a well diversified company, as you all know, with a wide range of products across the textile industry, processes, and also in hygiene products and oil industry. This apart being the leading specialty chemical manufacturer. we also provide high end customer solution to our core customer base and that is our main value for the acceleration in the market for more wallet share it will enhance the customer confidence and thus our brand equity in the market presently our geographical coverage in key international textile hub to further strengthen our repute in the long run uh, this trend will help us to foray into a new virgin market where we want to explore our sales more and more and we aim to leverage brand value of inotex and biotex to further our hold in the market our expansion into new high growth categories like home care and hygiene and also the drilling specialty saw a tremendous opportunity to cooperate with the leading branded detergent makers for their polymer requirements in home care and hygiene and also a great opportunity for giving solution to india's premier oil and gas companies within drilling specialty our existing strategic partnership with helgard australia for our antimicrobial and hygiene range 
our uh, European channel partner, Eurodice CTC Belgium, for the technical upgradation in our product line, for the more support to our customers globally, and also our premium institute conference like Sasmira for our research and development for our future goal. It continued to remain cordial and thus found beneficial to both the partners. Such alliance experiment will continue in future also. May I now request Sanjay to take us through the overall performance of the company. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Arindamji. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, financial year 22 has been a watershed year for Finotex in the recent times. We have a commendable corporate results for quarter four financial year 22, which is the result of our firm belief in the future of the industry and in specific Finotex. Our current quarter growth is at par with the growth seen in the previous quarters of financial year for 22. Our quarter four growth is much beyond our expectation, which will hearten our stakeholders. We are also happy to inform you that our new facility at Abarnath Built in state of the art technology complying to the highest standards of sustainability is a great success and is a test case for our portfolio expansion and capacity utilization efforts. Due to the increased demand and order booking, we are planning for additional 21,000 metric tons capacity increase, which is expected to commence its production soon. Let me highlight about the specialty chemical industry. We see a bright future for Finotex on the various important global factors in the outer industry. Economic activity has been on uptick and many industries are reporting pre-COVID volume figures of productions and sales. There has also been an overall global optimism in the Indian economy resurgence leading to many high-valued global capital investment moving to India as it is seen to offer stable social and political environment, federal structure competing with each other to attract industries, favoring investment policies, uh, low cost, affluent literal demographies, etc. This will augur well for chemicals industries as India enjoys the status pharmacy of the world. The government of India recently announced extension of PLI scheme to few more sectors. This will significantly boost the domestic manufacturing capacities and exports at very competitive prices. Our twin focus of building a world-class brand and market expansion will be based on manufacturing of quality products through sustainable manufacturing practices. On the fundamentals of our Finotex financial performance, our operation revenue rose to 121.4 crores, which is up by 62% year-on-year basis in quarter four financial year 22. And in the entire financial 22, this revenue is at 368 crores, which is up by 69% year-on-year basis. Similarly, EBITDA has shown an uptick of 21.5 crores, which is up by 68% Y-on-Y basis in the quarter for financial year 22, and 71.2 crores, which is up by 76% year-on-year in financial year 22. The EBITDA margins is at 18%, expanding by 60 basis point in quarter four financial at 22, and 19% expanding by 77 basis point in financial at 22. The patch stood at 170 million, which is up by 42% YRY. Margins stood at 14% in quarter four in financial at 22, and 569 million up by 28% YRY basis, in which the margins stood at 15% in financial year 22. This is the PAT margin. The cash flow from operations has gone up to 133 million, which is up by 43% year on year in the financial year 22. Our operational efficiency has resulted in improved working capital cycle, and we aim to continue to focus on the same. This outstanding result will serve uh, as a fresh barometer for us, encouraging us to seek out new prospects. Across all the business segments, we will continue to scale strategic new benchmarks, diversify our customer portfolio, and thus increase our wallet share and offer more diversified product range. In addition, we are implementing two new measures to look internally in order to optimize various operational areas. We aim to continue to meet the expectation of our stakeholders in the future. With this opening remarks, we will open the call for interactive question and answer session. 
thank you and i will pass it on to the moderator please thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question participants are requested to restrict to one question per participant if time permit please come back in the question queue for a follow up question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles participants you may press star and one to ask a question the first question is from the line of rikin shah from umkara capital please go ahead hi so uh, given your company's revenue is uh, majorly dependent on textile chemicals i believe the product mix has changed in this quarter so if you can give some clarity on that and how how do you see the product mix in the in fy23 uh, uh thanks mr shah i would like to mention like already we have been discussing in our previous quarters also in the earnings calls there are basically three verticals which we have one is the textile uh, the other one is the cleaning and hygiene which is for having the surfactants and detergent businesses and the third one is for is a small one which is a uh, oil and gas which is uh, you know for limited customers and limited areas so basically we have been always for the last couple of years we have been marching towards the cleaning and hygiene businesses also and uh, uh, let me tell you that this cleaning and hygiene business is itself touching almost uh, in the quarter four it's almost touching uh, you know 35 to 40% of our business right now in the cleaning and hygiene itself now coming to the textiles yes we have already been focusing upon sustainable solutions in which we have been able to reduce the affluent treatment of the customers and that has been our major focus areas for developing more products and processes which is the need of the textile industry right now along with that we are focused more on the finishing packages in textiles broadly there are four different processes pre treatment which is the cleaning there is a dyeing process coloring there is a finishing process and a printing process to it all these four processes require almost uh, 25 different functional chemicals and all these together constitute only 3% cost to the user so basically every product is contributing let's say 0.15% cost to the user and the finishing is the sector which is our main highlight always because this is the place where you know the entry and exit barriers are very very high the company is the textile company generally do not change the finish of the fabric or the yarn or the whatever substrate they are doing at the same time it is also having a lot of value addition product lines which we are working on so basically our for textiles we have been diversified and focused upon sustainable solutions as well as the finishing packages which is almost let's say 60 70% of our textile entire business right so so on the product mix in fy23 would you be able to comment from quarter to onwards like i mean the company has been investing a lot on product certifications plant audits in the last couple of years the idea was that the sustainability was to pick up and that is the way even the quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 where our company has grown up by let's say 64% in quarter 2 81% in quarter 3 and now we are again with almost 69% in quarter 4 so broadly this all the growth path which has been laid is because of the new product lines and the new focus area understanding the need of the textile companies which is mainly for sustainable solutions in which we are reducing the energy levels the the water requirement of the customers and also providing them solutions for finishing which is a entire package which we are providing from beginning till the finish so those are helped us a lot i think 60% of our revenues right now belongs to that area oh right that is a mix of exchange yeah 
right so we can expect the same in 23 yes so that is the it is a you know there is a big change which has happened in the textile business in the last couple of years and this was quite anticipated and expected and we could always visualize that many years back and that is the reason we have started moving towards that direction we have blue sign certificate which is one of the most difficult stringent esg kind of a environment friendly certifications at the same time our plants have been audited by german company hoinstein because these kinds of zdsc level 3 ocotex eco pass codes and the various certifications which our company has today is all on the direction of sustainability and sustainability is the way the textile is going to change up in future as well and we are totally focused and we are much prepared than the european multinationals who are still not in in that kind of a focus yet right Okay, right. and if I can squeeze one more in. So, in the in the in, in one of your calls, you have cited that you know your Amphenar plant has a much better gross loss turnover compared to the yeah. Mumbai plant. So, if you can expand on that and how you know why that is so high. Okay, so I will come to the point that uh, you know we have just started in in December. 21 we just started a you know few production in the ambarna facility which has picked up until march now and further we have expanded more operational efficiencies in ambarna so the 36000 tons expansion which we have done which can produce in fact 40000 tons today and in fact after that again there is another expansion of 21000 tons which is ongoing and should be up by the next month now together this investments has been done by internal accruals only the kind of product lines and the kind of technology is in a way the reactor batch sizes are much bigger which helps us to have a better operational cycles here plus the cleaning and hygiene product lines are also making us make a better asset turnover ratios on this uh, on this new facilities so this facility as such all of our product lines what we are producing are all fungible capacity in the same capacity we can produce the textile chemicals the cleaning and hygiene raw materials and special chemicals and additives at the same time the oil key specialty chemicals they are all fungible capacities and now we have started getting uh, quite strong orders from for the cleaning and hygiene businesses and due to that we are able to save a lot of efficiencies and we have able to increase the productivity also because the orders are repeated in textile chemicals like we are doing almost 500 product range in that what the general sops are that once you get an order of a different product you have to have a separate sop in which you need to clean the vessels very well to avoid any minute part uh, part uh, contaminations even in parts per million basis whereas in the business of cleaning and hygiene where we have at diversified and we are getting very strong in that that product lines the order quantities are quite high and repeated orders so that we save a lot of time in operationals and you know sops so that is also leading to better asset turnovers and it is a quite a quite uh, right piece of land and we have ample of space for future expansion so the 21000 tons is also been done at that same location right Got it. And on the so, sergeant, I have requested to come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. I request to all the participants restrict one question per participant. If time permits, please come back in the question queue. The next question is from the line of Ashi Rathi from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Sanjay ji, congrats on good set of numbers. Uh, indeed, we have seen some stupendous growth in FY22. Uh, but you know, how much of this should be actually attributed to say price increases, and uh, what is the kind of volume growth that we have seen as a company? And if you could uh, help us understand uh, some outlook on you know what can be uh, the next uh, two three years top line growth and what can like grow on this strong base that we have already built in FY22. Okay, thanks, Mr. Rathi, for your kind words. Uh, so basically, the volume growth in the financial year uh, is almost 85% over the previous year year on year basis and the quarter four is contributing mainly to the volumes and the new businesses which we have got in the cleaning and hygiene now the cleaning and hygiene sector is quite a massive sector as such and we have just have our footprints for the couple of years step by step and now we have been able to crack bigger accounts and bigger orders which are lined up and due to which we are expanding in fact uh, when we started this 36000 tons 
CapEx plans, we expected that this will take us almost three years or two and a half years to, you know, to ramp it up because that was our Indian almost doubling our capacity then. Right now, if we see, in fact, in the quarter four, I think almost the 50% of the Ambarnath plant is almost, you know, utilized for the existing ones. And already we are on the next level of increasing to another 21,000 capacity for the, you know, to, you know, we need to have that kind of a space and a capacity to cater to those orders. So the volume growth has been the most significant. The price rise was not more than 5 to 7% in the quarter two, quarter three, based on the raw material prices and fuel prices and the, you know, passing on the cost increase, which we have done in the quarter three to the consumers. So broadly, we have been uh, very much excited with the opportunity we have. Going forward to next two years, I think, uh, you know, from the CapEx point of view, we still have been expecting more CapEx, which will be planned up in the coming year. Uh, but let me also mention to you, these CapEx are all funded by internal accruals, even the 36,000 tons, which is now effective 40,000 tons in operations, and the 21,000 tons which we are setting up together will also be all done from internal accruals, and it's been done by internal accruals right now. And uh, way on, like in quarter two, we had a growth of almost 64%. Quarter three, we had a growth of 83%. This quarter, we have a growth of almost 69%. So all these things, I, we can expect future trends also to be, you know, in the same lines. And also, uh, cleaning and hygiene is going to become one of the, you know, major areas of the growth, which is going to, you know, give a good uh, returns to the company. Oh, great, thank you. Amana, the, can you quantify the KPEX numbers, sir? So basically, we uh, already we have done almost uh, for the 36,000 tons, we had done a CapEx of almost 31 crores broadly. And uh, for this 21,000 tons, the CapEx value is only 17 crores. The point here is that uh, once we at that time, the, the company, I mean, the Amana plant was a brownfield project. So you know, uh, there was a lot of cost involved in the, you know, in setting up the buildings and things like that. At the same time, now the expansion is based on only on the machine increase, and that will be the, that's the reason the CapEx quantity will be funded by 17 crores, which is will be done by Intel Accruise itself. Fantastic. Uh, wish you all the best, uh, Sanjay. Thank you so much for the okay. Thank you, Mr. Rati. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit Bansal from AB Private. Please go ahead. Hello, Sanjay ji. A good performance. Thank you. My question, my question is that, sir, on World Malaria Day, uh, Dr. Somia Swaminathan, former WHO's key scientist, in an interview emphasized on new technology for eradicating malaria. So you have a product called Aquasec DCF, which also deals with stopping of larvae cycle and all that. So now it's a win-win situation. Now WHO is more emphasized on these kind of uh, diseases to eradicate. You have a billion dollar product. So why are you not pushing for it? After Q2, I have not ever since heard a single news about this product. So what are your niche views or what are your positivity on this? Sir? I'm not hearing anything from you from the last eight or two years. So the line for the participant dropped. Uh, we okay. move on to the next participant. Oh, no, I, if you want, I can just give a slight uh, touch on that for the other participants also. Uh, so here it goes. Uh, as such, in the last, as we also see in the last two years, there has been a lot of changes in the company itself in terms of expansion, CapEx expansion, and we are turning around to a different level. It is, I believe this is one of the most transitionary phase where the company is right now. And as we have been expecting, in the last uh, one year, we have been also delivering substantial growth. And I think we, our entire team, the management is also spread on the current opportunities, which are already working in our favor in terms of the cleaning hygiene businesses, the textile product lines, the sustainable, the kind of strong team which we have built, the kind of documentation, the product audits, the plant audits, the FDA certifications, and things like that. So going forward, uh, you know, the product line which uh, Mr. I forgot the name who was there on that call, but he addressed. The idea was that, yes, we still have that, but that is not the main focus about it because at the end of the day, these are connected with authorities and government. Right now, we are more focused on things which are easily doable, which are in control, the kind of request of the production and the order levels which we are seeing. We It's beyond 
uh, expectation, in fact, to be more precise at the moment. So right now, we our main focus is to capitalize on our core businesses, which is textile chemicals, specialty chemicals for detergents and oil also. At the same time, yes, that product is also available, which is on the, on the slow uh, process right now, but we cannot expect or we cannot anticipate any kind because it is connected with authorities and things like that. And once you're connected with authorities of government of India or government of or WHO, things doesn't work in this. Uh, in this process. So that's to just, you know, for all the participants, yeah. We can take it up. Thank you. Yeah. The next question is from the line of Jatin K from Alpha Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for taking my question. So my first question is on margin reduction. So we saw, oh, QOQ, we saw a bit lower margin. So can you please elaborate on that, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Jatin, uh, let me also tell you, historically or also in the previous quarters, you will see average margin, EBITDA margins of the company has been 17 to 18%. Now, even in for the entire year, if you notice the EBITDA margins for the entire financial year 22 has been 19% broadly. Now, the we all are witnessing, I mean, there is no industry left out globally in which there has not been an increase of the raw materials. Various factors like fuel or maybe war-like situation or geopolitical, the container cost, the Shanghai issue, Shanghai again closing down, this and that. So we all are witnessing something which is beyond the control of people and, you know, of the companies. Whereas, you know, at the same time, I would like to mention that we are in a very niche market in the sense our cost, our you know, the cost of the product to the customers is not substantial at all. What I mean to say by that, we also have regular update and price increase with our consumers and customers, which have been started doing from 1st April. At the same time, you know, the kinds of fluctuations in the raw material prices and things like that, it always takes at least a month or two months to pass on that much increase for any point. I mean, most of the cost companies operating, whether it's in chemicals or specialty chemicals, the pharma will have this thing. At the same time, what is important, uh, I would like to mention about, if you notice the quarter two, or quarter one or quarter four of the financial year 21, we are surely at par even with the quarter 22 margin. So I don't take it as a challenge. More importantly, I would like to highlight to uh, Mr. Jatin and also the participants, what is the key, what we are looking at is to gain the size of the company. Today, if you calculate quarter four of this last quarter for financial year, we have touched 122 crores, which is analyzed basis 500 crores or let's say 485 crores, which has been almost achieved without even having full utilization of the Ambarnath capacity, plus not calculating the another 21,000 Ambarnath what we are doing. And also, this itself is from a 220 crores, we had already touched almost 500 crores in the one year period, which had numerous challenges for every industry broadly, and especially chemicals and, you know, petrochemicals and crude and shortages and, you know, everything. Needless to mention, we all are watching it. I think more important for the company is the volume increase, for the you know the scale where we are touching up and what our aspiration levels are. EBITDA margins are still almost in line, half percent plus minus. I wouldn't say that would be a challenge as long as the you know the company is growing at 80 percent growth or 80, 69, 70 percent, and the volumes are also going ahead on that basis. Keeping in point that the company is still debt neutral and we are funding everything by internal accruals. At the same time, the kind of product lines which we have introduced in textiles is going to shape up in a very rapid way even in the coming times. So I think, Jatinji, I would, uh, I, I have answered to, you know, I don't see that as a drop. I mean, more important is to see the overall trend and quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, all together have contributed 19%, which is surely higher than our previous year's uh, EBITDA margins also, which was based on 220 crores, whereas today we are annualized at 480 crores. Sure, sir. I completely agree with your point. We have a, we had a very good, very, very good FY22. I just wanted to check whether for next year we should build in the 18, 19% type uh, EBITDA or should we build in the Q3, 24 type EBITDA is what I was trying to just watch from here. So, so also, let me also mention to our participants in quarter four, if you can also notice the kind of the manpower cost increase which has been taken place. Now, see, basically textile and any kind of a new businesses, especially in our field, 
everything is to uh, you know it's like the seed and then there is a fruit so the seeds are sown we have been having a solid team uh, you know uh, you know a solid team planning and you know addition is ongoing which is always will be reflected in the future earnings of the quarters which you will see in this coming years also so that is the way i would like to you know uh, take it up and try to explain to our participants so all these things are strategically done the cost has gone up not only on the raw material price or the fuel or something on the freights more important it these are like deliberate strategic investments done in manpower also in the quarter four at the same time there is another capex which is happening of 21000 tons again by internal accruals itself and that is also going to help us to reach to a good value can making sure the ebitda numbers are also similar to what we have been seeing always Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Jatin, I'll request to come back in the question queue. I request all the participants please restrict to one question per participant. The next question is from the line of Alisha Mahavla from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning and congratulations on great set of numbers. So my question thank is sir. primarily regarding the cleaning and hygiene um, segment. Um, so did I hear you correctly that currently it is about forty percent of our revenue? And maybe if you could also highlight um, what is it that we're doing in this uh, segment? Are we contract manufacturers? Are we contract manufacturers? Or do we um, uh, uh, do this under our own brand name? Um, maybe if you can just throw some light on that. Uh, firstly, uh, let me tell you about the quarter four. the volumes of quarter 4 is almost 11000 tons 10500 tons on that almost 4000 tons has been for the cleaning and hygiene businesses so that's the basis i had said on the on the numbers of the volume as such number 1 number 2 we are not getting into any contract things it is totally our brand our product lines our performance specialty chemicals which is adding value to the consumers product in which this has been introduced so those are the ways there is no contract manufacturing on going that is for sure and uh, uh, you and, and what was your next sorry alisha i missed your third question no um, this was my so basically you are saying that it is our own brand our own product and we are selling oh, yes. it through our own distribution network absolutely absolutely okay. so sure. um also uh, earlier in the call you mentioned that we've done about 80% kind of volume growth for the entire of fy22 going forward what is the kind of volume growth that we are expecting see uh, you know i would like to also mention we are now comparing fi 21 with 22 and that's the reason you are seeing 85% growth going forward also there will be surely a great volume growth on quarter on quarter basis even the quarter 4 volume growth was also above 15% on quarter 3 so going forward the kind of you know we are the orders we are uh, in hand and the kind of uh, new capex which we are looking at i think we should uh, you know we will be able to ramp up our abanat facility which will easily uh, you know with this 21000 tons i can put it in a different way that we can always touch 800 to 850 crores of the business lines with this capacity once it comes in place that is the what is the you know we can touch up now how quickly we do it what kinds of uh, you know so we are expecting we will be on a right pace similar pace as can say so that's what we are anticipating in future So if I mean just ask for the class, the 850 or things after the 20 21,000 comes yeah, yeah, yeah. peak utilization, and when is the 21 expected? That will happen from the next month. <clears throat> next from next, month. yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I'll come back in the queue. Okay. Thanks, Anish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sunil Jain from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question, sir. uh my question related to more of a stand alone revenue if i see your uh, other expenses has increased from 7.5 crore to 11.8 crore so what is there any exceptional or one off in that no uh, nothing of that sort this is also including our sales promotional expenses product certifications exhibitions audits manpower salary and also i would like to inform the participants actually which is how we are looking at it is a uh, indian business in india business we are calculating and considering finotex stand alone along with finotex indian subsidiary which is finotex specialty private limited which is fspl we call it now the ambana facility and the other businesses the new detergent and the businesses which we have 
uh, you know, uh, emphasized and we have started getting into is all through the Indian subsidy, which is known as FSPM. So in our declaration to the stock exchange, if you could go through that covering, uh, you know, on the covering highlights of that, in which we have bifurcated the consolidated business and the Indian business. Now, that is also very important because, the, you know, we have, uh, that is the way to look at us. That's the way we will prefer you can do your analysis about yeah, uh, yeah, uh, great to clarify that. Uh, yeah. Sir, another question related to uh, more of an industry perspective. Uh, yeah. So, here from here onward, where you see higher growth, whether it, it, it is in textile or more of a consumer uh, hygiene product? Yeah, well, from the industry perspective, let me tell you what's happening in the industry from our, in my opinion, or in our opinion. Textile uh, has and garments has somewhat become little bit seasonal, I can say. So, so the point here is it catches up to the previous entire year's demand, but not happen in anticipation of every quarter and quarter. Let's say for today, there has been a drip in the bedsheets international market, just for an example I'm saying. So naturally the Walmart, the, you know, the Walmarts of the world and the big companies uh, are not, the bedsheet companies, the home textile companies are not able to have that much volumes, that much they had in October, November, December, those times due to the Christmas uh, purchases and things like that. Plus, there was uh, Omicron fear, which had also deteriorated the demand in this January month, broadly speaking. Most of the Indian bedsheet companies were also, but if you see the entire year, they are still higher than the financial year 21. So, basically, there will be some fluctuation. Sometimes, if there is some a spark of this kind of COVID-19 or things like that, but broadly speaking, the consumers, the markets, the kind of performance chemicals demand which has increased in the textile, there is no doubt that this business is going to have still growth levels always. Now, if you also consider our quarter two and quarter three, let me tell you, almost entire 95% of that business or 90, yeah, 90 to 95% of that business is contributed by textile. So the growth of quarter two, which you have seen of 64%, and the growth of 81% in quarter three totally denotes our textile specialty chemicals. So basically, I can only mention here right now, January was not too strong for the international markets and few customers orders have been postponed for the current quarter, which is ongoing today. So if you notice, textile has been overall having this kind of small waves kind of in demand. That is fine, acceptable, because at the end of the day, it's, it's something which is cannot be avoided. Detergent markets is also picking up more because also the, you know, the consumer demands for cleaning and, you know, has increased a lot on, on better kind of cleaning chemicals and things like that. And as now the summer has proceeded this, this now, the, the cleaning chemicals pick up and demands are always seen more in the summers rather than the winters. That's what happens generally also. So I, I would rather say, and now I'm talking of the company's perspective. From the company's perspective, I can mention detergents and cleaning hygiene businesses will be growing at a much, much, much faster pace. We have also got some, you know, uh, you know, important orders uh, in hand, which has been uh, from well-known companies, and uh, that is also going to significantly contribute to our EBITDA, to our turnovers, and that will catapult us to a different level in which textile will not be the only area of our major businesses. That's the way we are looking at it. At the same time, textile has its own entry and exit barriers, and we, that's our core businesses. Let me also tell you that detergent business is not too far from the textile market. Let me tell you how. In textile also, we have the pretreatment chemicals in which we need to clean the fabrics and things like that. That is the same kind of product line, surfactants, and the cleaning additives which are used in textile in the processing as well. And the similar kinds of businesses are used for the detergents. So basically, the product chemistries and things are quite similar. And as I have said, this is a fungible business where we have fungible capacities, and that's why our asset turnover ratio should always be quite significant. At the same time, in textile, we have have a different way of working. We are like a double shooter. We are like a solution provider company. This is very important. Now, in textiles, what happens day in, day out, they are having a lot of troubles and problems in the processing. It's not only the product which helps them. It is the kind of solution, the kind of technical services which you provide. Today, we have our technical team members at almost all the spots and textile cities of India, and they are like a doctor on call. In fact, you know, that's the way it works. 
and the customers keep calling them till like you know today we are facing some different issues can you help us out so we are solving it out keeping in mind i would also like to mention all our participants the textile chemicals which we are on onto is not a coa driven business it's not like a commodity it's not like a soda ash or acetic acid in soda ash and acetic acid all the chemicals of or, i mean or the chemical from all the companies whether it's from gnfc or imported or any company is the same it's glacial 99% acetic acid however in our product line it's only the performance which count i always mention to few of our audience and participants that you know we are like a homeopathy solution provider the chemical which we provide is like a solution of a homeopathy the consumers has it it solves their problem and they pay for it it doesn't matter to them whether our product has you know what is the active of it or what is not the active of it that's the way we have been proceeding ahead and that's why you can see our ebitda margins will always in the last 11 years of uh you know uh, you know in the last 7 years also you can see our ebitda margins has always been more or less intact and that's the way we are looking at it so we are very uh, approached in a different way so we approach on sustainability we approach on solution providing and we are approaching on finishing thing so textile itself we are going to always grow there is no doubt about that part we will be always growing up in the textiles there is no uh, this thing at the same time detergent business is something which we are going to be very much looking at and we are very much excited and enthusiastic of the kind of business and orders which we are uh, you know we are working upon thank you i'll request uh, sunil to come back in the question queue the next question is from the line of dhruv mochan from hdfc asset management please go ahead uh yeah thank you so much uh, so you mentioned about a few certifications that you have gained in the last uh, i think last year or the last couple of quarters which have also aided to our growth uh, if you can help us understand uh, how critical these certifications are uh, how complicated the process is to get these certifications uh, plus uh, also uh, just to get some sense of this is also uh, if you can help us understand how many companies in india probably would have these kind of certifications uh, uh, given the industry has a very long tail in the textile chemical industry has a very long tail so this will help us you know understand the criticality of these certifications And so we, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so let me inform to you let's say our major competitors are the european companies as such now these european companies are already working very closely with the buying houses like walmart target sona bianca marks and spencer h&m and things like that and they have been you know working on sustainability they have been working on concepts which can reduce the water consumptions and help in you know the textiles to be more you know more eco friendly kind of a concepts and that's the way the brands have already emphasized on their suppliers which are our customers to adapt to those kinds of product lines and things like that if they want to sell their products to their stores so there is a great requirement of moving towards that direction for that matter we have blue sign with us blue sign is one of the most stringent certifications if i'm not wrong there should not be more than three or four no i think two or three companies in india must be having blue sign certification and we have also got the blue sign in our malaysian facility actually so i i don't want to you know get into too much technicalities how they are doing the audit it's like a six months audit by the way they fly from europe they sit in the plant for seven days you know it's like 3000 questions and you know it's it's a quite a difficult process and you know that's way and at the same time we have like the blue sign is one of it we are that we have eco passport which is also german european certifications the the companies send their people to the indian plant they audit it on various uh, you know as you know points which includes the environment the product see what shape the documentation part of it and lot of things once we are certified in that then we are able to export to the companies who are again exporting their products to walmart h&m and things these buying houses now health guard australia is also you know we have a exclusive collaboration with them as a international marketing chain uh, channel partner now let me tell you how does this business work just for an example health guard products is already approved in target and turner bianca but target and turner bianca wherever they are processing their fabric let's say for trident and wellspun so trident co compulsory hai ki they have to use a health guard chemistry of antimicrobials on their substrates because target has told them and turner bianca has told them that you need to use health guard so it's a reverse way of marketing we go to the customers customer convince them and then our customers are not i should not say forced to use it but they are they have to be inclined to use it so that is the kind of strategy which we have built on 
and that is something which is helping us as you have rightly also said you know there have there can be a long tail in the textile chemicals but the kind of market we are targeting is all the corporate sectors now in india we are working with almost all the biggest corporate customers of india you can start for any subset whether it is yarn towels suitings bed sheets uh, shirtings bottoms anything right from chenab jct oro dyeing oro textile marvel spinning deepak birla vilsim tc saluja reliance immer sinkas belspuns raymans wapi ribilwada baswada the doniers and then himat singh ka indo counts you name it and they have to using our packages and we have spread out to all of them so if we want to work with this top notch of the indian textile companies we need this certification place that's the way the chemicals can move out it's not because ultimately their products can only be sold to the their customers if you have those certifications so this is a long term process we started in sector in 2019 by the way or 18 i think and then there was a covid times and you know things couldn't you know we couldn't derive the best outcome of it because by the time there was covid out and again last year we have any many more certification we have the green screen we have the bi we have eim software which is very important for the governments of usa so to coming back to the point these are the very very critical things to differentiate and that's the places where the brand works and that is the position where we are at the moment and and the, the investment in this is very high let me say for that matter so we have done it and it's already reflected in the it's already debited to the books in the last one year also so that is a, a kind of importance we have on this certifications that dsc level 3s and things like that perfect perfect sir. this is extremely helpful uh, just one quick follow up uh, is it possible to broadly share say for example uh, you sign an eco passport two certifications uh, critical certifications how much percentage of our textile business sales is coming from because of these certifications uh, and i understand there will be some cross selling also for example you get a customer then you try to sell him other products where probably certification is not required but just to get some sense if these two particular products how much kind of uh, direct sale benefit is coming because of these certifications how much percentage of a total textile business because of this basically we are not at a, you know by for getting individual certification wise because certain brands require this certain brands require that based on their geographical requirement now in bangladesh if you talk if you don't have blue sign i think you are out of 30 40% of the market i mean without knowing the product without knowing the price that doesn't matter for them without blue sign the you know they will not even discuss further on you know it's something like that i'm just giving you a you know uh, off hand example so i'm just trying to explain how this is the psychology of the textile work zdsc3 is also similar to it if you are not zdsc you have to forget uh, supplying to the you know if, if you are talking of bangladesh or you are talking of pakistan or you are talking of european markets or us markets zdsc3 and blue sign is the most important thing that without this things will not work even himal singh will not buy end accounts will not buy they are our key customers by and large so you know this is the most important thing so we cannot imagine Uh, you know having not having these certifications right now it's more important it's like you know it's like a capex it's like a it's like more of a machinery then we will require the certifications for selling more correct sir thank you yeah. thank you so much yeah. thanks so much yeah. thank you the next question is from the line of arpit shah from stalin asset please go ahead uh actually speaker mongol I just had a couple of. But sorry, your voice is breaking. May I request you to come in a better reception area? Right. Hello. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to understand what is the quantum of revenue that you can expect uh, from the commercialization of specialty chemicals of your dye CTC in the current fiscal, and, and has there been any contribution in the last fiscal? I don't know. Uh, question number one. Uh, you. Uh, 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 the ROC which got reported this year was around 28 percent. You think you will be able to improve it uh, in the next uh, couple of years, or it will be something where you will come back to 21, 23 percent, and 28 percent will be an outlier year for you? Those are my two questions. Okay, I will uh, first take the you know the Eurodie question at the moment. See, with Eurodie, we have a very different kind of. Uh, you know a different kind of let me explain to you what is eurodai about eurodai plant was earlier the unilever plant eurodai acquired the unilever plant in belgium which is what in the center of the entire european markets they produce specialty textile chemicals so what they were have been doing is they buy the raw materials from asia make in europe again supply to asia which is bangladesh pakistan india and and also vietnam and you know also in the lac countries latin american countries 
by and large, they need the visa certifications and things like that. In the last one year, we all have witnessed a big change. The freight cost, the container shortages cannot make you, you know, profitable to buy the raw materials from one part of the world and again supply the product in that part of the world. They need to have their facilities in India, Asia, somewhere. That's the one place. Number two, Eurodai had acquired the business of Stephens in UK two years back, which is one of the best wool working chemicals company in UK. So those product lines are also very important. So what kind of business we have with Eurodai, let me tell you, it's not one-sided business. There are two kinds of businesses we are doing. We are also helping them to produce the products in India and Malaysia and start supplying it to the various customers in this part of the world in Asia. This will save and help us a lot in the EBITDA. If you notice, our average realization price is less than $2. If you keep moving the raw materials from one part of the world to another continent and back to this continent, you will be spending at least 40 cents in that, which is not going to work out for any company as such. So they understood that, you know, they need a partner in Asia. We are the best for them. That's the way we started these relationships. And then we are also doing multiple things. We are also buying specialty products from Europe, keeping it here in India and supplying to various customers and gaining the wallet share. So basically, we look at us in a different way. We are here to provide a platform to all the textile companies as a single stop solution. If they need specialty health guard antimicrobials, we have the stocks here. If they need specialty chemicals for wool, which is out of the world kind of a quality for specific customers like Donier for Raymond's, for Jayashree, they will buy from us and we started immediately those businesses. Whether it is NSL or, you know, Jayashree in uh, Kolkata or Raymond's for that matter. So we are basically providing like a platform here in which we are able to make the textile customers depend on us and buy more products from us. See, let me also tell you, there is no incremental cost for that. I'll tell you how. As it is, we have 100 distributors in India broadly. We have our technical team of almost 35, 40 people all over India. We have the same people who are, you know, trying and moving to the customers for supplying Finotex products or Biotex products for Eurodye or HealthGuard. So basically, it's like, Analogy, if I can give you, it's like the grocer. The grocer needs to have all the range. So once you have all the range, you will be definitely attracting more wallet share and getting more and more customer dependability. So the idea here is to join certain key companies with us and to make a synergy amongst it. Like Finotech and Biotech had been done. So that is the way we are bringing Health Guard, we are bringing Eurodye to us on the table. So the idea here is not just to have you know, okay, of course, it is only a two quarters that we have been able to do it. So the size is picking up. And also, we are also supplying from India certain products which Eurodye need not produce it in Eurodye because of the cost of the reach, because of the cost of the fuel, because of the cost of the shortages of the raw materials which they are facing in Europe currently. So basically, we are exploring all the ways of two side businesses representing each other. So you can say it is like an extended plant which is available to us. And that's the way we are finding solutions and helping our customers and gaining wallet share. Now, to be a health guard also, for that matter, we are supplying from health guard to Pakistan. And these are like expensive product lines, which are almost $35 a kilo kind of a product, which is almost 10 times our average less in prices. And with health guard also, our prices are fixed. And then we decide and we have our strategies. We appoint the distributors for health guard and Finotex globally. And that is the strategy we have in hand. We decide that size, the selling price of that product in that market. So this is something that's more strategic driven. It is, it's a blended way of looking at the things and the kind of, you know, our more for emphasis is on what we can take it to a different level. Let's say we are exhibiting everywhere in the world. We will be there, you know, in, in Brazil, in, we'll be there in Spain, in Itma, in China, in Tadai. For us, for them, you know, having health guard, having a booth, rather we have this booth with us and, you know, we're representing Eurodai also there. This makes more sense in which having operational efficiencies and we can work more in a, like a very strong partnership kind of a way. Now, coming to other questions, actually, the ROC part of it, let me tell you the kind of businesses, the kind of orders, the kind of, uh, you know, we are anticipating and rather not anticipating, which is ongoing, I should say is something which makes us quite comfortable in mentioning that, yes, this could be the kind of a new transitionary ROC percentage which you can expect going forward. Keeping in mind, we are not adding any debt to our, uh, you know, it's everything is, uh, you know, there is no, everything is from internal accruals itself. And I think this is the kind of, 
you know, the returns which we have been generating on the based on the volume growth, the new capex and the new orders which we are looking at. So that's the point to you, RPG. Yeah. So uh, currently we saw this quarter cleaning and hygiene become a very large share of our revenues from less, let's say from less than 5%, it's grown to 35 to 40%. And you're in probably volume. one. In volume. Yeah. Yeah, in, in volume. So broadly you all have one, some, one, of, one of the large contracts, maybe let's say detergent player, I don't know which contract. But this 35, 40% volume content, didn't you expect it to continue for SR23? Or this was more like a one-off play that you all saw this work? No, no, this will continue to grow up and that's why we are building up more volume capacities and uh, we are very much excited about that. At the same time in quarter three also, this was constituting to 5% broadly in terms of volume as uh, in terms of broad, uh, volume and turnover also in quarter three actually. Got it, got it. And currently you are all aspiring for your company to become an 800 crore to 850 crore revenue company. So what kind of capabilities or what kind of bandwidth you all need, would need to build let's say for the next one or two years uh, to, to achieve that target? So basically, I would like to break up this question into a couple of things. Uh, uh, number one, the aspiration is not 800 to 850. It is much higher than that. But I was mentioning in my previous questions and replies that the current capacity expansion, which is ongoing of 21,000 tons, it will take us to 104,000 tons per year in this times now can get us to a turnover of easy 850 crores broadly. That is what it was mentioned about. That is one. Now, that is the reason. And also, I would like to mention to all the participants, the new Ambanar facility, it was planned for in the first quarter of the first COVID. I'm talking of April quarter, April to June 21. That was the, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, the, uh, the 20. April 20 it was the first time when we envisaged that you know, we will be expanding. That was the most unpredictable quarter, by the way. And we were on, on look of the expanding the plant in which we can always triple our businesses or get it to a different level. And that was the year 2020 in which we acquired the plot plant and then we started working on it in 21 December by November, December. That was the time we could start the commercial production. So by and large, this is the kind of you know, we always we are envisaging that, you know, we will be achieving these kinds of businesses in future. Coming to the management capacities and things like that, we are already hiring the best of the manpower. That is also, you can see, reflecting in our expenses in the quarter four. And that is also will be happening in the future as well. There will be a lot of product additions and product certifications, exhibition, more geographies which we are adding on. And uh, so there can be a lot of more joint venture tie-ups also which will help us to reach to our levels which we are looking at in the coming years. Arbita, I request to come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Levin Shah. <coughs> from value person. Yeah, uh, advisors, please go yeah. Ahead. yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So my question is on the gross margin. So if you look at our uh, margins over a five, six year period, uh, those have actually come down to around close to 40 percent what we used to do and now it has uh, come down to around 35, 36 levels. So uh, when we say that this uh, cleaning and hygiene is uh, the growth driver in Q4 and uh, also going forward it will, the growth would be much higher versus textile uh, business. So how do you see these gross margins? Does the cleaning and uh, this segment has a lower gross margins as compared to textile? Yeah, I'd like to mention firstly, uh, the way to look at our company will always be on the EBITDA percentage and also on the EBITDA absolute terms growth rate. That is the way we should be looking at it. I'll tell you why. Let's say we are, like I said, we are working like a solution provider, like it's a platform in which we will have the entire range of all the chemicals, bringing in more gaps, whichever is not yet filled. So the gaps have been filled by Eurodye, by Health Guard, things like that. Now, it is not possible for any company to have such a big kind of a product line have the same gross margins for all of them. Let us say even for like a departmental store, the kind of profitability on the chewing gum and the kind of profitability on the cake cannot match up broadly. What is more important is how do we get the wallet share higher, number one. How do we get the customer's trust and more dependability on us, number two. And look at the bottom line numbers. That is what is very important. 
also would like to mention the four years which you are mentioning about. In that, already the company has grown three times, whereas the gross margins are almost similar. And the EBITDA margins for the last financial year 22 has stood at 19%, which is after the, you know, the increase of 60% of the business, we are still able to have a better EBITDA margins broadly. So the way to look at our company should not be exactly across this margin kind of a networking because we cannot, let's say, a consumer needs a product and what we are looking at is that they need 25 different products from us. So maybe in one product, if the gross margins is, let's say, 40% 40% or 35% doesn't matter. What is more important, what we can get out of that relationships in future and how can we bring engagement and a permanent business to our table. That is the way we look at the businesses. So, you know, that's that would like to mention on that. Sir, I completely understand that. I think uh, I put my question wrongly maybe. Uh, I understand that that uh, growth is what we are striving for and even it is coming at the similar kind of EBITDA market. So, going forward as well, uh, this is probably the EBITDA margin range that we should do despite the mix changing. That is what I understand, right? Apart from this, coming to your gross margin questions also, we all have witnessed a big change in the international crude raw material prices. We have witnessed the fuel cost, the transport cost, the freight cost, the shortages of chemicals. And also in the last two quarters, you might have also noticed as you are into, uh, you know, many specialty chemicals, uh, gross margins would have dipped substantially, if I'm not wrong, quarter two, quarter three. In that also, we have been able to sail out and give up to this levels. So I don't think that is uh, much, uh, you know, a worry for us as long as our bottom lines are met and also the kind of growth which we are looking at and the volume growth. This is the our focus area right now. But again, having said that, this is the kind of the, you know, this is the kind of gross margins which we can anticipate always as a base also broadly. Understood. Uh, sir, and last question on the, uh, so uh, what we have said is that during this quarter we did around 10,500 uh, odd tons kind of volume. And on that uh, uh, we have done around 120 uh, crores uh, kind of revenue. Now if I look at the volumes and our total capacity is broadly 50% kind of uh, capacity utilization on the volume front. So is it uh, that once we reach peak, util- peak capacity, uh, we can, uh, in fact, touch around uh, close to 900,000 uh, crores kind of turnover with the existing capacity itself. I mean, the 83,000 uh, tons capacity that we have. With 83,000 tons and the 23,000 tons, which is going to be set up by next month, we are touching 104,000 tons, number one. Number two, also would like to mention the average realization prices have been always on the upscale also. Also, because the kind of product mix which we are offering and the kind of solutions we are providing, at the same time, this month, I mean, from not this month, from April last month, we have started, you know, passing on the price increase. Because naturally, the price increase which has happened in the raw material prices in February month, that couldn't be easily passed on because you already have one month's contract with the customers and, you know, everybody wants to start the new prices from the financial new year. So that has been postponed to the financial new year, which has been started taking effect. So broadly speaking, if you talk about that, considering that I think 850, 800, which I mentioned about, it can be taken as the base. Then it also depends upon how fast we can, you know, uh, get on to more sustainable businesses, the finishing packages in textiles. And at the same time, how much more, you know, uh, prices and the cost, of, you know, the price increase we can get in the market. So that can be the two factors which can lead to much higher numbers with the same facilities at the moment. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you, Mr. Shah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Aditya Mehta from GK Capital Management. Please go ahead. Aditya, may I request to unmute your line from your sir and go to the question, please. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, you are now. All right. Congratulations, sir. Congrats on a good set number. But just Thanks. coming back on the margin front, so last quarter our guidance was that we can maintain 24% EBITDA margins going ahead. And now I understand there have been some raw material price issues and escalation. So even now when we have started to take price increases, so what's stopping us to giving the guidance of again reaching that 24% near to work the, that level on EBITDA front? See, I'll tell you there are a couple of things involved in that. Number one, uh, 
uh, you know, the 24% EBITDA margins was one of the quarters, if you see all the quarters in place for the last 10, 12 quarters as well, number one. But having said that, that was also, also there is a lot of manpower expansion which we have done, which you can also see in our current quarter. There has been a lot of expansion in the, you know, we are investing in the exhibitions and the product audits and other things which have been happening in the in the current quarter, last quarter, quarter four. So that obviously will be affected in the EBITDA margins. At the same time, we we are not mentioning that this is out of sight, that this cannot happen ever. That is not the point we are trying to mention. But we are trying to say whatever is whatever has been shaping up even now in the financial year 22 is 19 percent, which is far ahead of our average quarters of all the previous two three years. By the way, so that is what we had mentioned in the light of it. So as and when our utilizations increase, we can expect to go up, go back at the higher levels. We cannot deny that it will not go up. Of course, this is what is the point. But always the point is that once we have an expansion, there is a you know a revenue seed cost, more manpower, more expansions and things like that, which takes time to spread out and shape up. So now that is the point where we have reached now that every expansion, after every such kind of an expansion, we'll see a lot of investment being done on manpower and you know upkeep of the comp uh, upkeep of the facilities and revenue expenditures which are on the books already so that's something which i can say it's not a cost i think it's a seed the fruits generally take some time in the textile businesses to shape up in the coming quarters three four quarters you will see that things will start moving up in the right directions okay got it and just uh, just follow up uh, you mentioned that the 40% contribution in q4 was from detergents business for the volume, if we, for the volume, okay. Yeah. So, was there any degrowth in the textile business? Yeah, I would not say it's a degrowth. Actually, if you notice, uh, January months are always soft, softer generally because most of the buying houses in the world they have already placed their orders in October, November, December. Obviously, also there is a Diwali season to it, and the demand in quarter three was quite good enough because it was. The only quarter, I think, which was without Omni, without uh, Delta, or without any such kind of, uh, you know, you know, uh, things which is stopping people to go in the markets and buying. And in December onwards, there was, a, you know, the, already the Christmas orders and things were already been done by most of the exporters. So January was not in a great uh, shape, I can say so. But these are all, <clears throat> I, I, like I said in my uh, conversation few, I mean, a, a, a few minutes back, you have to take uh, textiles as not, uh, you know, it's not a, perennial kind of a thing, but you will see slight wavy things happening on and off, but at the end of the day, it will cover up and lead to the growth. It will be quite, uh, you know, like uh, not exactly a seasonal, but something sort of it, you know, every shortfall of a quarter gets covered in the next quarter and thereafter. So that's the way you can look at it. Okay. We're great, sir. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification and all the Thank rest you. of you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Aman Vij from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, my question is on the finishing uh, textile uh, chemical segment, uh, which we are, I think, one of the leaders. If you can talk about what the market size is and what is the market growth, as well as who are the other big players in this. And my other question is on the uh, other segment, which is this uh, detergents and uh, home fund. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I mean, I will I'll share these things right now. But, but as such, it's not about more about the earnings uh, result topic. But let me tell you something which I have been, uh, you know, updating our investors and participants in the previous things also. So let us tell from the point that the textile came to India in you know in 1980s when most of the textile companies. Textile chemical companies belonging to Europe also started coming to Asia, in India, in Bangladesh, in, you know, in Asia. And uh, so basically, Finotex has been always the backdoor suppliers to them in the previous times. And in the last 10, 15 years, Finotex started supplying in its own brand and own value. And that's the way we have been growing ahead as such. Our European companies, European uh, customers, the textile chemical companies, which are today our competitors, are namely uh, Acroma. Austral Clarient, then it is Huntsman, Austral Siba, then there is uh, Henkel, uh, which is now known as Ulkra, there is Croda, Austral ICI UK. So these are the European big giant companies who have already diversified to various 
cleaning lotions and uh, personal care items and product lines which have a much better uh, 400 basically this margin this kind of business was always having 300 400 percent margins once upon a time and then when textile got competitive in 2002 and 3 due to the changes in the quota and the geographical changes so the margins those days had come to 40 percent so basically this this entire industry has been dominated by European companies by and large and they still control most of the buying houses requirements and you know things like that. So the entire market, how do we put it together should be around the, let's say 25,000 crores broadly. That's the way this entire market works too. And uh, so that's the global market size where we are addressing at the moment. And uh, coming to the detergents and cleaning, it's it's quite massive uh, compared to the textile requirements as such and there is you know it's it's quite massive the kind of businesses we are looking at should be you know uh, sizable kind of companies like levers like png like ghadi like patanjali so some of them we are already working now and we are aspiring to enter most of these biggest names even the coming times so broadly this is the you know how the market shapes in the in the international macro level but the broad numbers you have already discussed in your earlier calls, I was specifically asking for the finishing... Uh, Aman, sorry, may I request you to speak louder? Uh, sir, I was saying uh, the broad numbers you have already discussed in previous calls, I was specifically asking for the finishing uh, specialty textile chemical segment, not the whole industry of uh. textile. So basically, generally speaking, finishing is one sector where there is a lot of things happening in terms of requirement of technical textiles and biotechs and phytotechs are quite ahead in that segment. The consumer preferences have changed like in COVID times, people have started asking for antimicrobial, antiviral, antifungal, mosquito repellents and also for water repellents, stain repellents, kind of a product line, all repellencies and things like that. All these kinds of specialty, chemi or specialty finishes cannot be done mechanically. They have to be treated by chemicals and that's the place where we have entered upon and that house has been our fourth area. So going forward, if, you, if we can say almost 50% of the total demand should be finishing and that is the place where the consumers are also ready to pay you a better premium and a better kind of a turnover is expected in finishing. For us, 55% is finishing by and large and that's the place where we would always like to dwell in. You are saying roughly 10 to 12,000 uh, crores. Correct, correct, correct. correct. correct, correct. Are, there, are there any other big Indian players in this? Like Color Text is a, uh, also one of the companies and there are See, other... Uh, so Color Text is into dye stuff. So let me tell you, dye stuff is not what we do. We are into specialty chemical production in which we are for providing products which are used along with the dyes as such. So Colatex is a known player in the dye stuff market, which is a complementary product line to the same kind of an audience, I should say. The closest competitor to us in the listed space should be Rosari in that matter. And uh, But there is a big differentiation between us and them. They work on products which are more volume and turnover rather than gross margins. They are products more sewer driven and every month pricing kind of a thing, whereas we are working on providing solutions for the textiles. Now, when you provide solutions, obviously the beta margins, the beta, you know, the profitability and the kind of, you know, the kind of respect and is much better in terms of the audiences rather than providing products which are quite me to kind of a product. That's the differentiation we have. With in our product line from Rosaria. Yeah. Any players in unlisted space who are big? Unlisted space, I mean, in the listed, there are some more, like Atul is there, which has tied with Rudolph. One of the segment of Atul is with Rudolph, which is into textile, dyes, and specialty chemicals. Pedialyte is there. Unlisted, I would not uh, mention much because those are not, uh, you know, there is Razel in South India, which has been pretty doing well in South India. So that is one of the companies as such, I can say. Uh, yes, final uh, question. Uh, who are the two, three players you have mentioned who have the blue sign uh, like us, apart from us out of... Their chemical will have, Bodel will have, but in terms of specialty chemicals, I wouldn't know. Uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I mean, there is no one, I should say, in Indian markets. Because if I say Huntsman has it, but Huntsman is not exactly an Indian company, it's an European company. So how can we classify it in India? Of course, they can sell in India using that certification also. But that doesn't mean they are Indian companies as such. Uh, sure, sir. Thank you for answering. This. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. I now hand the conference over to the management.
for closing comments. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to us. And, uh, you know, we are very much excited and enthusiastic from where we are today. Going forward, we are always open for any more questions and any more meeting requests which comes to us. Uh, you can always contact Churchgate Partners, our investment advisors, investment uh, consultants and advisors for that, investors. So over, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for listening to us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Finotex Chemicals Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.